Greetings, delegates, to the first convocation of the Democracy in Europe movement. Last spring, I had the high privilege of assisting Yanis Varoufakis, the government of Greece, and the Greek people in their quest for fair and reasonable treatment at the hands of Europe, the hands of the European governments, the European Commission, the European Central Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. I had the chance to observe at close range the working of European institutions and European power. It was power exercised largely in secret, uh, in the service of half-hidden financial and political interests, uh, and with, uh, in the end, ruthless disregard for the, uh, the case that was put to them by, um, uh, by a government of a country that had suffered enormously in the crisis. It was power exercised under cover of an ideology that was both reactionary and from an intellectual standpoint, paper thin. But what struck me in particular as an old veteran of the United States Congressional staff was the near complete absence of procedural safeguards, of accountability, of record keeping, of transparency, and also the absence, practical absence, uh, of an independent and skeptical press. These are the elementary functional components of a working democracy. And their absence is an enormous obstacle to the progress of democracy in Europe. They are therefore an excellent place to begin. I might mention as an example, in part because it was a major piece of my early life work to make it happen, that here in the United States, the Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, has a legal obligation to pursue the goal of full employment. It is also obliged, as a matter of law, to report to Congress every six months uh, on its progress toward that goal. It's not a perfect arrangement. It's not one that guarantees that the goal will be met. But it has produced over the years a very much better policy than we would have had else otherwise, and a better policy, I think it's fair to say, than Europeans have been experiencing under the heavy and authoritarian hand of the European Central Bank. I mention this not to boost the United States, but to make the point that no one should tell you that what you are seeking is impossible to achieve. So let the movement for democracy in Europe prosper and grow. I send you my esteem and my support at a moment when the democratic breeze may be blowing a bit also on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, so work hard, do good work today in Berlin, and check the news tomorrow morning to see if we didn't make a little bit of progress also over here.